Good evening. I'm Marie Jose Kravis, and uh, I speak to you. Thank you. And I'm speaking to you tonight not only on my behalf, but also on behalf of my husband, Henry. And even though I didn't clear these remarks with him, uh, I do. I uh, want to give credit where credit is due. The idea for the Kravis Leadership Institute and the idea for the Kravis Leadership Prize is Henry's, not mine. And of course, the idea behind the Kravis Leadership uh, Institute reflects Henry's desire to expose young college students uh, to leaders, uh, to leaders in various fields, be it the arts or sports or science uh, or uh, business or government, and of course philanthropy. And the idea was not to try to find a formula uh, for teaching leadership, but it was really to expose young people uh, to others who had uh, originated new ideas, who had challenged the conventional wisdom, who had taken risks, who had uh, held themselves accountable, and in doing so, who had really taken people to places they'd never been, or taken peace, people to places about which they hadn't dreamt. And from that flowed uh, the idea of the Kravis Leadership Prize in Philanthropy to uh, honor and celebrate people who had taken risks in this particular field of nonprofit, uh, not for profit ventures. And so we set out with Claremont McKenna College, uh, with their staff, and I would say now under the direction of Kim Yonker, who's here tonight and whom I thank profusely for all your help during the, during the year. Kim, if you would please take a stand. We assembled a group of nominators who will remain anonymous, I hope, uh, and we established a methodology for assessing pro projects. And the idea of the methodology was to support programs based on the impact that they had on their community. And I em emphasize the word impact because many programs are evaluated more on the basis of their inputs. Uh, for example, if you take education, people look at uh, enrollment as uh, data, or they will look at how much, how many dollars are spent per student. We wanted to go beyond that and really look at graduation rates. We wanted to look at dropout rates. We wanted to look at the transition from school to work. We really wanted to look at the outputs and to look at impact. And though there are limitations to methodology, we have tried to impose uh, this rigor in our selection process. And so once we receive these nominations and put them through uh, this methodology, they are then referred to the selection committee. And Pamela Gann mentioned uh, members of our selection committee are with us this evening, uh, Lord Rothschild, Jim, Wolf Jim Wolfenson, and Harry McMahon. But I'd also like to mention Amartya Sen and Indra Murthy, who aren't here with us today, but who are part of the selection committee. And of course, this year, the selection committee uh, chose an outstanding person, an outstanding woman who um, was telling me today when we talked about, just in passing, we talked about A Thousand Splendid Sons, a book that many of you have probably read, and who said, you know, I lived through that in Afghanistan. My mother had 17 children, but she lost, uh, 16 children, I'm sorry, but she lost 11 in childbirth. I've witnessed the abuse against women. I've, I've witnessed the violence against women. And she was in a comfortable position in Michigan when Russia, or the Soviet Union at the time, invaded Afghanistan. And she said, I couldn't just stay there. I had to go back. And she went back. She went to Pakistan, went to the refugee camps, and began to work with women, working on education and, of course, on health education, public health. And from the refugee camps of Pakistan, she went back to Afghanistan and under the Taliban regime worked underground with schoolhouses 
in the basement of her home and in other basements, and continued to work and to believe in women until she could now uh, develop this Afghan Institute for Learning above ground. But every day, as she says, she leaves her home and she doesn't know if she will return alive because she's fighting the force forces, forces of corruption, security risks that she's taking. She's in a war-torn country. But nevertheless, she shows these qualities of courage and, and of steadfast commitment to this cause of enhancing education for women. And let's not kid ourselves. When you enhance education for women, you're also enhancing education for men. Better educated women are better mothers. They're much more aware of issues such as nutrition, hygiene, health care, and it benefits the community as a whole. And I welcome you, Sakina, and I hope you'll come up and share with us your experience with the Afghan Institute.